Well, yeah. Neil, we do have so much to get through today, but we'll start with the incredible game in Twickenham on Saturday afternoon. Billy and Mara were back in form at the weekend, showing just how crucial they are to England playing well. How impressed were you by the both of them? Well, they were both under pressure. Um, so top players sort of turn up when under pressure and they both needed to have good games because Eddie was under the cosh. Their key players, the two you've mentioned there, and Owen Farrell was under the cosh. And they, they turned up and performed. So it was really impressive. And it shows a good mentality. Uh, and sometimes you get off to a bad side. It's how you deal with it. And they've dealt with it really well. So um, I think I think we've got quality within England. We're, we're trying to find our way. And I was much happier with the balance and options that we took against France um, than we have throughout the tournament. So... We're good. We're a good team. We know we are. We've just got to keep humble, keep our feet on the ground, keep working hard. Well, Ryan, Watson on his 50th cap was back playing like he did on the last Lions tour uh, in front of an onlooking Gatland. So do you think he's put his name back in the hat for Lions selection? Yeah, I think it was in there. I know he's been injured for a while, but I think he's been in there in the hat the whole time. He, I've always spoke about him on here. His feet, he's dangerous when he gets the ball. Um, he can step as well as old Furlong, Tad Furlong. So, he, yeah, he'll be back in there. And again, it was good to see him get a try on his 50th. I, I know him quite well, actually, and he's a good bloke. So, um, another person that, yeah, you, you could throw in that hat, definitely. But I don't think his name was ever out of that hat, to be fair. You, you could pick three back rows from, from 12 and they would do a job for their country. And I think it's a bit like wingers. We're all going to sit here and go, oh, what's your, what's your winger pairing for the Lions? Like there must be five or six wingers that you could drop in there. Um, so it, ultimately it comes back to Gatland is the the main man, you know, like he, he gets to pick his favourite players uh, and we all sit here as fans and, and speculate. But um, yeah, I thought Tone was, was impressive at the weekend. Electric. Um, good to see. So Dylan, I suppose England's penalty count was down in comparison to the previous weeks, which proved crucial to their victory. So do you think that Eddie maybe swallowed his pride and ordered his players to be less careless and risky in being penalised this weekend? No, I think look, they, they didn't need, like everyone in the media was saying that they needed to, to sort the discipline out. From the, from the first game of this tournament, they've had an issue and it obviously got to a point against the Wales game where it was so obvious it was killing them. Um, so look, they, they didn't need Wayne Barnes and, and Matt Carley to come into camp, the, the English refs, to tell them that. But they knew internally it was an issue. So they would have focused heavily on that in the week and eradicating their penalty count to 10 and below, like they go and win a game. It just shows that um, you, it, you make it very difficult to win international rugby if you've got um, double figures penalty count. So look, you know, they have class players like Maro, you know, five penalties the other week. It just shows that class is permanent. You know, people have little dips here and there, but, you know, but he came back and he played a, a blinder. And the, the most impressive thing about Mauro for me is he didn't kind of go within himself. He's still on the edge, still confrontational, still niggly, still everywhere, you know, still playing Mauro Toje's game. Um, but at the same time, his, his discipline was cleaned up. And I think the other thing is, is refs will be looking for it now. Like there's this big story about England's uh, discipline. So refs senses are heightened, you know, touch judges are looking for it. So they've almost got to go the other way and be whiter than white, you know, clearer than clear that they're on side and they're rolling away and they're talking to the ref, they're chirping away all game. And what I found really interesting is none of us knew this until post-match. Owen Farrell didn't speak to the ref uh, during the game. He was ordered um, to not speak to the ref, which I thought was very interesting. Who ordered him? Eddie, was this an order from Eddie that yeah, not to speak to the ref? I wouldn't call it an order, a tactic, maybe. But look, it also wouldn't be a rugby game lately if we weren't discussing some refereeing decisions. So um, firstly, I want to talk about the TMO Joy Neville's call to award a Toje's match winning try. Did you see enough evidence from the replays to award a Dylan? Um, I mean, look, we, we sat here and laughed at me a couple of weeks ago and we... we you know, the referee's decision is final. So I don't even know why we're talking about it because Wales are on for a grand, grand slam when they're gifted 14 points in Cardiff the other week. So I'm um, sure this will go down well in the comments section. But look, why are we even talking about it? All right, well, Team then, Ryan, I'll ask you the question. 
I don't I don't think it was down. And I don't even think Maratoje thought it down. When he goes over the line, he's still rocking forward and backwards trying to get that ball down. And I think even he was surprised. You can see by his face, I think even he was surprised that they called that as as the balls touched the floor. But listen, she had a lot more angles than we did. So, you know, it's her call. But I don't know. I think it was... Uh, is, is there anything... Do you know how... Um, who's the referee assessor who came out and said he spoke to um, the ref post-Wales game, said he got it wrong, da, da, da. Have they come out and said that? No, that would be interesting. I don't think so. Yeah. And listen, um, hey, I'm a big fan of Joy Neville. I think she's a good ref, so... Yeah. I mean, my, my take on that was, uh, I, I don't think from any video footage that I saw immediately with the game showed that it was a definite try. But my experience of playing the game, being in that situation, he 100% rounded that ball. Um, that was my feel. There was no video angle that you could see. So when I heard the ref's call, I thought, well, that's it. Because when I looked at the footage, unless she's got some other footage, um, you couldn't be 100% sure that that ball was down. But she made the call. I think I think it was a right call, but I don't think that I saw any video evidence of that. Just yeah. the feel of the action. Um, but now, now that Ryan said that, I'm just thinking, Mario, uh, and Mario, and you're, Dylan, you'll know this. He's, he sort of blows up and celebrates things a lot. So yeah. he may have like blown up and celebrated what it meant, especially a winning try, a bit more. But he. he he didn't. But my, my thought immediately was, that's a try. Not because I'm English, because the movement, the momentum, it was all with him. And there's, I can't see how he wouldn't have got that ball down. But it's a try. So it's like Dylan said, you know, there'll be lots of people coming on this that agree and disagree. And that's the good and bad thing about social media. I want to move on then to what you make of England's starting hooker battle. So, Kevin Dickey was flawless this weekend, but who in your eyes is England's best hooker at the moment? I mean, your words, Dickey was flawless. So, um, you know, do you know what? I think he's really coming of age, and I think that the more sort of opportunity and time he gets on the field, we're seeing, because we, we don't know much about Luke Kevin Dickey. I know about him because he was chomping at my heels. He's a better player than me when I was playing. Um, but I had a whole lot of experience, and Ryan's probably experienced this now, like, Coaches like experience till a, till a point, and then you've got to hand over to the young fella. So, Ryan, you're probably just approaching that. But Luke, Luke's been around a while, you know what I mean? He, he's he been around since 2015, and um, he's been biding his time, um, and he, he's been playing great rugby for Exeter. So, you know, you know what? Um, current European champions, premiership champions, um, the shirt is his to lose at the moment. Um, and that's just the way it works with selection. He was the last to play. He's part of a winning team. He beat the, the French hype team. Um, and he was very, very good. Very direct, explosive. He rides a horse bareback. He's got no front teeth. He's a great golfer. He's uh, He was ranked number one in Capture the Flag, Call of Duty, worldwide. This guy is so diverse, so interesting. <laughs> and he's not even the better of the two of the brothers. His other brother plays down in Plymouth, I think. And he's better. So I'm a big fan of Luke Cowan Dickey. I have not but, seen you that passionate about something in a while. Yeah. Well, because I'm talking about something I know about. And do you know what? Jamie George, he'll be better for it as well. Because we all know that the quality, the class that Jamie is or has. I mean, this will only be good for an England uh, uh, hooker's birth. You know what I mean? It's only going to drive each other. And do you know what? The game's so much about the 80 minutes now. So the people that you've got on the field at the end of the game, when you're within a, a five or seven point score, you need, you know, quality throughout your 23. And I think, you know, rugby, the culture or the attitude towards the, the bench now has changed. You know, people are picking 23s and using them. Unlike in Becky's day where your leg would have to be fallen off to, to put someone else on the field. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. Do, do you see that, Neil? I do, but it didn't always happen like that. I, um, um, was proud to captain England uh, four times. Um, one of those was against Italy. And um, I, I'd never been subbed off. If I started the game, I finished the game. Um, I might have had a 10-minute break 
for a card or to get stitched up. But but in this game, um, obviously you're proud to lead the side out, captain the side. But I was taken off in the second half, and you know four players come on, and that was Lawrence Delalio, Martin Johnson, Matt Dawson, and Jason Leonard. 252 caps coming off the bench. And I was absolutely gutted what well, had come on. But obviously, they come on and win the game. But you're, you're right. Um, I mean, Clive, in, the, in my early days, um, through the 90s, obviously, you only got subbed on if there was an injury. But then when the, the rules changed and we expanded to 21, then 22, then 23, then they used more. Clive, from way back in... 97 always talked about the bench as being as important to the starting 15. It was about the entire squad, match day squad. Um, and and people use them now. Um, I hated coming off. Um, so it, it's not for me, but they, they definitely... I mean, if I was Jamie George now... Um, I wouldn't be worrying too much. Yes, you want to start, but it's about the 23. Um, they often win the game at the end when there's fatigue. I think Jamie George would be potentially better off the bench because of his attributes. Um, and he could pick off um, some sort of guys that are struggling at the back end of the game. 